Hey everyone, Emily Roberts here. Hope you guys are doing well. The past 24 hours have been an emotional roller coaster for most of us. Uh, many people have been either really happy or extremely sad. Walking around the streets of New York today has been very interesting actually. Um, people look very somber, scared, anxious. Uh, I've also noticed that on my social media feeds there are people who are really, really angry and really, really upset, scared, promoting more fear and more hate, and that's not what we need to do when we're feeling powerless. Right now, we need to feel empowered. No matter what, who you voted for, what you believe in, this is an opportunity to use today as a way for, there we go, sorry. You guys with me? Perfect, okay. It's an opportunity for us to use today as an example of how we can find power when we, feel, when we feel powerless or when we're feeling out of control. What winds up happening when we give into the fear and we start acting in a place of fear is that we start freaking out. Yeah, and the whole world will feel that. If I go home and I'm freaking out on somebody or I'm starting to worry, 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 the people in my environment feel that. If I'm not pulling it together and holding it together for myself, I'm making it worse for everyone else around me. Now, let me start by saying this. The first thing I want you guys to learn from this, I have a couple things here actually. So the first thing is this, you are so allowed to feel your emotions. In fact, please do honor and respect your emotions. If you're excited, congratulations. If you're heartbroken and sad, honor that, validate that. And if you have friends that are feeling this way, talk to them on the phone, talk to them via text message, talk to them in person, not online on people's Facebook feeds or social media feeds necessarily. Have a genuine conversation with them and express to them how they're feeling and how you're feeling. And if you're noticing that they're upset and they're sad, just be there to support them. You don't have the magic words. We, I don't even have the magic words, but validating me and saying, man, I'm so sorry you're feeling this way. This is really hard. I'm so sorry to hear this. These are ways you can convey connection and you actually create change because when people feel heard and they feel honored, guess what? They start to feel better and we need people to start feeling better so that they can rise up and speak up, okay? If we're feeling down and deflated and like victims here, we're not gonna be any better than the people out there promoting hate, promoting these bad things that we don't want to happen to this country. We've gotta feel powerful, so take back that power by acknowledging your emotions and finding someone out there to help you validate them. And if you can't, validate yourself. Of course you're allowed to be upset. Of course you're allowed to be happy if that's what you want. You're allowed to feel these emotions. Honor that. It's the most natural thing you can do is accept your emotions in this time. You can't change anything that's happened. And so people going out there on Facebook, on social media, and on Instagram, or even in real life, and promoting this like anger and aggression, that's only tearing us apart, you guys. That's only tearing us apart and showing us that we can't tolerate change. We can tolerate change. We do it every day. Change is scary. That's the second thing I want you to learn from this. When has change not been scary? We don't know what's gonna happen, but we can be optimistic if we want to. We can be open to looking at this differently. I've been having this conversation with parents today, several parents are like, what do I tell my kids? They're afraid of nuclear weapons, they're afraid of all these things. They go, they were probably afraid of those before. People are making this a fear-based um, society right now, and, and media really is. We can step back and say, what are we doing here at home, in our schools, in our employment, in our places of employment? What are we doing here to promote love? What are we doing here to show people that we care about them and we honor them no matter what their background is or what their socioeconomic class is or what, they're, um, what they believe in? If we teach kids and we teach our friends and we tolerate people's differences and we accept people's differences and we show kindness to people no matter who they are, we're showing people that we can rise up against this. Going out there and speaking about this and acting out in a very freaked out manner only promotes more fear, shame, anger, and regret. We can't do anything about it. We have to radically accept that right now, we don't know what's coming forward. But we can stand together and honor each other's feelings and emotions. We can also teach people that we can't do anything unless we are feeling empowered. And the way to feel empowered is through feeling connected. When you feel connected to other people, when you feel like you can validate and understand other people, you are changing the world. But I, I was watching a video today by Marianne Williamson, and I wrote something down that she said because I just thought it was so poignant. It is, we can't change our experiences or our, or the outcome 
but we can show up for the world and we can have more power. Don't create more drama. Don't create more disdain. If you agree with me like this, even if you are a supporter of something that maybe I'm not a supporter of, even if you believe in different rights than I believe in, we all believe that we're human, correct? Because we are. We all believe that everyone deserves respect. So start showing respect in small ways. If you don't have control over your situation, whether it be about politics, your relationship, your job, whatever, do something to help you feel in control. The way I do that is I spread kindness, whether it be talking to my doorman on my way out and saying, hey, what's up, how are you? Or helping a stranger. Doing something kind is actually the most powerful thing you can do because it creates a magnetic response. It really does. When I see someone being kind, I'm more likely to do something kind. When I am feeling that relationship and I'm feeling that like energy from doing something kind or being someone being kind to me, I'm more inspired, which inspires other people. It is a magnetic response. We can change things when we feel empowered with kindness and love. We can't only do that with hate. You cannot change the outcome, but what you can do is find the power within yourself to be kinder to other people, to be an example. Going out there and saying all these bashing things, that, that's your right. You're allowed to express yourself that way, but you're going to push people away because people are hurting. People are having their own emotional reaction to this. And when you're so angry, it puts up a wall. It really does. Not that kind of wall. It's a whole other story, but it puts up a wall. It does. It makes me think, I don't know if I can even console you. I can't connect with you. I want to connect with you. I want to help you. I want to show you compassion. But if you're being angry, mean, and you're trying to solve something with violence or with na nasty words, not that kind of nasty, negative words, you're really pushing people away from you and creating a fear-based mentality. So let's try to be more kind. The last thing is, so these are the three ones I just gave you, but I want to give you one more thing. Fear and freaking out are different. You're allowed to be afraid. You're so allowed to be afraid, and I honor that 100%. I'm afraid a lot too. Um, who knows what's gonna happen? But freaking out is an action, that's a choice. Writing these long rants and hurting people and um, saying things to people that are really egregious, that's a choice, that's an action. Feeling is not a choice, that's, that's natural, that's part of your biology. But freaking out on other people and taking your anger and your blame out on other people only does more of a disservice. It divides us. We're supposed to come together right now to either grieve or to connect, whatever you want to say. But doing that in a frame of negative energy only promotes more negative energy and hate. So spread more love. Spread more compassion. Validate. Give someone a hug. I gave a little girl a hug today who was afraid. And I said, you know what? We're going to get through this together. We all will. And that's the message that I want you to share with other people. We will get through this together. And the more we come together and spread more love, not hate or fear, the more able, or the better, excuse me, the better able we will be to stand up to people who disagree with what we believe in. The more capable our country will be to take on these negative mindsets and these very limited mindsets when we come together. That's the only way we can do that. But ranting, raving, and pushing your agendas and putting your anger out there into the universe only divides us and makes us more um, anxious and fearful. And our kids feel it. So if not for me, if not for yourself, please do it for the kids, okay? Do it for the kids. Please show compassion to other people today. Please watch your words. Be mindful of your words because they matter. And show more love to everybody. This is what it is today. Things will change. Life's all about changing, right? When you deal with this today and you accept what it is right now and honor everybody's experiences by being kind and compassionate, you're gonna feel a lot more in control. Let me know what your thoughts are. I hope that you guys have a blessed and beautiful day no matter what you believe in. Spread positive energy and positive vibes, okay? Thanks so much, guys. Talk to you soon.